In the last video, we looked at the restricted conjunction rule, which is the rule for calculating the probability of a conjunction of events when those events are independent of one another. In that case, you simply multiply the probabilities for each event. Now we need to look at the more general case, where the events are not independent. Let's consider dice rolls again. Let's call E the event that the dice roll is an even number. And let's call P the event that the dice roll is a prime number. Here's what those dice rolls look like. We're interested in the probability that the dice roll is both even and prime. Now, if we were to use the restricted conjunction rule, we'd just multiply these probabilities together. Let's see how that would work. The probability of a dice roll being even is just 3 and 6, or 1 half, since we've only got 6 possibilities and 3 of those are even. The probability of a dice roll being prime is 4 and 6, since the primes make up 4 of the 6 possible rolls. Now, if we use the restricted conjunction rule, the calculation looks like this. We just multiply these numbers together, and we get a final answer of 12 out of 36, which is equal to 1 third. So according to this calculation, on any given dice roll, there's a 1 in 3 chance of getting a roll that is both even and prime. But we know this answer can't be right. How do we know this? Because by inspection, we know that there's only one possible dice roll that is both even and prime. It's the 2. But if there's only one possible dice roll that is both even and prime, then we know the answer. The answer has to be 1 in 6. But the restricted rule gives us 1 third, or 2 in 6. It overestimates the probability. So this example shows us that the restricted conjunction rule doesn't apply in this case. Why doesn't it apply? It doesn't apply because E and P are not independent events. We're interested in the probability that E and P are both true of a given dice roll. But if P is true, for example, if we know the dice roll is a prime, then that affects the probability that E is true, that it's even. If it's prime, then just look at the options. There's only one even number in that list of four prime numbers. So the probability of the roll being even is 1 in 4, not 1 in 2. And similarly, if we know that the dice roll is even, that affects the probability that it's also prime. In this case, if we know it's even, then our options are 2, 4, and 6. And only one of those is prime. So the probability of it being even, given that it's prime, is 1 in 3. So we know that the restricted conjunction rule doesn't work. And we know it doesn't work because the rule doesn't take into account the probabilistic dependence of the two events on one another. This gives us an idea for how we might modify the conjunction rule to fix this problem. Instead of just multiplying the probabilities of A and B, we can try multiplying the probability of A with the probability not of B, but of B given A. An expression like this, the probability of B given A, is called a conditional probability. We've got a whole other video on conditional probabilities, but for now it's enough to just read it as the probability of B given A. Let's try out this new rule with our example. First of all, let's remember that we know what the answer is supposed to be, just by inspection. There's only one dice roll that is both even and prime, so the probability has to be 1 in 6. Let's see if our general formula actually gives us this answer. Here's our formula. The probability of a dice roll being even and prime equals the probability of it being even times the probability of it being prime given that it's even. And here are the numbers. The probability that a roll is even is 1 half. The probability that a roll is prime given that it's even is 1 third. Since among the even numbers, 2, 4, and 6, only one of those, the 2, is prime. So the probability is 1 and 3. 1 half times 1 third is 1 sixth, and lo and behold, we get the right answer. Now, you might be wondering whether it also works the other way, if we consider the probability of a roll being even, given that it's prime. And the answer is, yes it does. Let's do it that way. If we switch around the a's and b's in our general rule, the result still holds. So here we've written the general rule both ways. And we've written the rule for this example in terms of E given P, rather than P given E. When you plug in the numbers, you get this. The probability of a roll being a prime number is 4 and 6, since 1, 2, 3, and 5 are primes. The probability of a roll being even, given that it's prime, is 1 and 4, since of those 4 primes, only 1, the 2, is even. 4 over 6 times 1 over 4 is 4 over 24, which is 1 over 6. Same result, it works both ways. So to sum up, this is the general conjunction rule. It's written here in two forms, depending on which you choose as the conditional probability term. But they're equivalent formulations, and they'll give you the same answers. Notice also how this rule reduces to the restricted conjunction rule when A and B are independent. In that case, 
following our definition of probabilistic independence, the conditional probabilities just reduce to the unconditional probabilities and you recover the simple restricted rule. Now in the next video, we're going to focus our attention on those conditional probabilities.